To you or I, the life of a terrorist seems incomprehensible, but under the right circumstances, you or I could easily be doing the same thing. How does a rational person find themselves in such a situation? Hello and welcome to In Focus. Let's centre primarily on ISIS, ISIL or Daesh, depending on who you talk to. They're the most barbaric terrorist group on the planet, possibly in history, and we tend to think of them as inhuman. Truth is, they all have the same genetic makeup as Mahatma Gandhi, Martin Luther King Jr. or even Mr. Rogers. It's a scary thought, but every bloodthirsty jihadist was once a regular person like you or I. The trouble with fighting radicalization is that there's no one path. In fact, with the right ingredients, the number of ways towards joining a group like ISIS are endless. But there is a common thread. John Horgan, a psychologist and terrorism expert at UMass Lowell, says this. People who join these groups are trying to find a path to answer a call to something, which would basically mean that they're doing something meaningful with their lives. You often see recruits are driven by this passionate need to right some perceived wrong, to address some sort of injustice, to restore honour to those from whom it's been taken. Okay, fine, but throughout history there's been plenty of people who have felt meaningless. They didn't all become terrorists. But Horgan says that ISIS is like no other group before it. He described them as the masters of packaging the fantasy deal. Groups such as the IRA or Irish Republican Army are forced to work hard to justify their position to both themselves and others. ISIS, on the other hand, take a lot of that self-doubt away, making the path to radicalization much quicker and easier come to jihad and feel the honor we are feeling, feel the happiness that we are feeling. Imagine this scenario, you're a radical Islamist living in a western city which condemns such a worldview. You're constantly forced to live a double life, pretending you agree with everything going on around you. Then someone reaches out, selling you a paradise free from that pressure, a place where the rest of the population isn't against you, but is one of you. Many people that travel to Iraq and Syria to join the so-called Islamic State don't necessarily have particularly militant or evil ideologies, though they often do, but they're almost always radical and filled with self-doubt. And there is no doubt that Western governments have played their part in exacerbating the problem, but not in the way that you might think. Let's centre on Europe. It's incredibly diverse, with more than 43 million Muslims on the continent. Now, it doesn't matter what your religion is or where you are in the world, you shouldn't be made to feel excluded from society for following it. But through government and social attitudes, particular branches of Islam, particularly Salafi Islam, is shunned by the community reinforcing the feeling of isolation, which, as I mentioned before, is exactly what groups like ISIS are searching for. Salafists are already ultra-orthodox, making their jump into radicalization and jihad smaller than most. The worrying thing about all this? All terrorists are radicals, but not all radicals are terrorists. It's up to law enforcement, public policy, and us to make sure those on the fence don't jump off it. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.